Hey guys, I, uh, I just wanted to do a quick code review. I've uh, come across this time and time again, and maybe I'm a little bit OCD, but uh, I just wanted to show, do a video that's specifically speaking to data scientists and how they can make their code more like a computer scientist would have written it. Um, that's of course a broad generalization. Some of the things in here are my opinion, but um, in general, I think it will help you make your code more readable and more approachable to guys like me. So I just did a Google search for uh, top most popular uh, Python notebooks. Um, what do you call these? IPYNB files. And I uh, came across this one sample, no, no, no intending to pick on the poor per the person that obviously is quite smart who made this. But I want to just quickly kind of go through the code line by line and show you like the issues I have with it, um, just from a readability standpoint, not just from a functional standpoint, even with this one. Um, but uh, so let's paste this in to Sublime so I can do a line by line edit. Um, so the first thing is uh, consistency here in variable names. So you can see. And, and consistency really in formatting in general. Uh, you can see here that they're using what's called camel case for these variable names, but then there's a variable name right after it that they're using um, underscores in. And then you can see here there's a comma with a space after it, but up here we've got commas without spaces. So um, it, for Python in particular, there's one tool that a friend told me about that uh, I've latched onto called Python Black, which is a code formatter. So it's basically just going to format your code um, consistently. Um, with Python, it's not my favorite language to begin with, so I'm happy to adopt someone else's standards. Python Black seems pretty popular. Um, so with Sublime, I've got the uh, plugin installed so I can just format all right off the gate. I see what happens. So, uh, so Black died on the very first line. Um, I'm not quite sure what this syntax is to be honest, but let's just comment it out for right now. There we go. Now it's normalized the spaces after the commas, which was the initial thing driving me crazy. It's also nicely spaced out before and after the equals, before and after the operators. Okay, so uh, consistency uh, is the first thing. No matter what rules you choose, let's be consistent. So. Another important thing with variable names is I feel like in Python, specifically with these da you data science guys, is that they're um, unnecessarily shortening their variable names. So uh, maybe this is because they are writing code to match a mathematical formula, I don't know, but when I'm reading this, um, a lot of these variable names, like what the heck is P1, what the heck is data1, like make these more description descriptive. So I, I don't know what these are actually because I just grabbed this code. Um, but um, let's at least change this. So for example, to make it consistent, so let's go for snake case names input file name one. It's not a file, it's a file name. Input file name two. That's easy. URL base. So I mean adjectives come before nouns in English. So let's make this base URL. So base URL plus input file name uh, one and two. And then data one and data two here. Again, this the previously we were using no underscore before the number. So come on, just be consistent. Um, Okay, so that's nice. Now, so on that same point, I know I'm, I don't know if I'm in the minority here or not, but like why, it's five characters, why are we abbreviating NumPy to MP? As a you know newbie user, I don't know what the heck NP is, let alone NumPy, so just call it what it is. Um, stats, fine, uh, URL open. Okay, fine. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you what, I don't like it because it's not a verb. Function name should be verbs. So Kaplan Meyer 
sounds like two people, probably two scientists. I guess this function is not Kaplan Meier or something, it probably calculates Kaplan Meier values. Again, I don't know what it really does, but let's make it a verb. Okay, so I'm kind of jumping around here. Let's let's um, let's skip back down and finish this first section first. So, um, you know, my main issue here is I don't know what the heck this data includes. Obviously, you can print it out. Let's go through and get all the MP dots. And change those. Oops. Change all those to num pi dot. Let's try change all the plot dots. PLT dots to what is it? Pi plot. Yay. And then, um, okay. So again, I can't really control what this library does. You know, um, again, I hate Python, but uh, let's just do this. <coughs> again, if you're making a graph, why would your legend be? data one and data two, these are like horses and cows, or what are the data sets? Um, another thing I thought, yeah, okay. Sometimes I like to standardize on the single quotes, but it must be Sublax standard to use double quotes. Okay, so we also renamed this to calculate Kaplan-Meier values. Great. And then up here, so I don't know what this, determine the Kaplan-Meier curve for the given data. I really don't know the format of this data. Some probably some kind of multidimensional array. I don't know what the colon is, but that's fine. I assume I can learn that. NumPy A range, length times at risk. So what is, at risk. I actually, I don't know. I wish I could give this variable a better name, but let's at least make the naming format uh, consistent. Failures is the times that censored equals. Is this array indexed by censored? Again, I feel like these video, these variable names could tell me what the heck the data is, especially here. P, R, and S, E. R and S, E are exactly same thing so why is this not r and r1 or number of zeros Ugh. just have no idea okay this one really bugs me i i why the f is this i i is twice as long if you, i mean fine if you're going to use a local variable named i for index oftentimes i'll see for i and in, in, as an index or for n which is a number starting at one so for n in 1 to 10, or i in 0 to 9. Um, okay, so I guess these are arrays. If something is a list, I generally name it plurally. So like numpy.1s, so 1s equals, you know, numpy.1s. And then you can iterate over that. So for 1 and 1s, it's a bad example, but I don't know what the hell it's doing. So anyway. So something like that. Um, and then it just plots it. So that's it. I hope that it um, helps you write your code knowing what the reader uh, has in mind as they're trying to read it. Um, again, in summary, be consistent. Uh, use descriptive variable names. It's, you know, it's much better than short variable names. You want your code to be readable, not clever. Yeah, I guess that's it. And um, their, uh, function names should be verbs where possible. Thank you guys. See you online.